Hi and welcome to my latest video. Today I'll be brewing a Hop Haze Epa. This is an Epa based on the New England Epa style. Uh, here you can see the recipe. Um, as usual I've included imperial and metric measurements here. This full recipe and everything is actually included in the YouTube description so don't worry. This is just a quick glimpse just so that you can have a nice overview of what we're doing. For those of you that aren't familiar with this type of IPA, this is a different type of American IPA that usually uses wheat uh, that creates a fair bit of haze. There's an awful lot of dry hopping that goes in on and uh, these are very juicy and very fruity and very flavorful. Something I definitely recommend for anyone who really likes those uh, hop tastes. So we joined the brew. I've now actually added all of the grain to the strike water. I'm now putting that very important sink strainer onto the top there. This one has a very simple mash schedule, basically 60 minutes at 68 degrees C or 154 Fahrenheit. And then mash out for 10 minutes at 75 degrees C or 167 Fahrenheit. So now I'm doing a nice even and slow sparge. This really helps the efficiency. One of the nice things about these uh, smaller brews with this uh, reduced pipe work is that uh, it really is so much faster because there's less to boil so everything goes a lot faster on heat up uh, and of course less sparge water to add as well so it's a much shorter brew day um, which is quite nice sometimes. So it's now time to uh, get rid of the grain and what I've done here is simply put a plastic bag over the top of the mash tun. I'm then going to flip it over and thus it goes into a fermentation bucket like this. Nice and easy, no fuss, no mess. So we're now actually at the boil and it's time to uh, control things. Um, here I'm using a spray uh, to disperse the protein on top and I'm now going to stir it all in. Uh, sorry for the footage here, it was a very hot day and uh, very very hard to uh, film in these very steamy environments. But uh, as you can see here I'm now stirring all of this foam back into the beer and uh, readying for the next step. The different types of grain and hops that go into this one, it's really quite a mixed bag and I have to say it was a real delight to my nose during the whole thing. Um, really, really nice. Um, I'm very excited about how this is going to turn out actually. As you saw from the recipe, there are many different hops that are going into this one and uh, as a result I think this is going to be very, very tasty. It is the first time I've brewed it, usually my videos are tried and tested, but um, this is one that I'm very confident about so I'm sharing it early. So it's now time for the candy sugar element of this recipe. I must add that you could use just regular sugar for this. Um, I don't think the result will be quite as good, but uh, that's all opinion and I certainly don't want to get into those arguments. So I'm now going to start adding some of the wort to it just to dissolve it down. The reason doing this really is just to make sure that uh, when you uh, do add this to the brewing system it's much much quicker for this to actually dissolve further uh, and you don't end up with lots of big lumps at the bottom of your brewing system which are then going to burn. Okay so in it goes now and uh, the most important step really um, is now once it's in, just get that spoon down there really quick into the very bottom of the system and give it all a very good stir up. Uh, you really don't want that to burn. So in goes the last hop addition during the boil. As you can see, I've actually used a hop bag for that. I really don't want that pump to clog. So it's now time to cool this wort down. This has been going for a few minutes now and it's starting to come down to closer to the temperature that I want to go to. And there you go. We're now about ready to start uh, transferring this wort into our fermentation vessel. For those of you that are new to grain fiber brewing, it's important to ignore the uh, temperature gauge on the front. Um, it's the temperature actually inside the counterflow chiller that counts. I find it easier to use a Blickman through meter uh, to do that. And here you can see my hookup, uh, which I launched in the last video, uh, which actually holds the wall out pipe for me 
uh, and uh, positions it so it will splash directly into the fermenter uh, which is really the best thing to do to give your yeast a nice healthy start into fermentation. I've added about half the wort now and I've just added the yeast and now I'm giving the uh, bucket just to move around just so that I can get all of that yeast wet which will then lead to a faster fermentation start. Uh, no need to really uh, rehydrate yeast uh, I don't think these days. Uh, things have really moved on from that point. Well the hydrometer does not lie. As you can see this was a spot on uh, on the gravity brew day, very successful and very happy with the result here and look at the colour of that wort, that's very very nice, very very nice indeed. So now I've added the uh, wort to a fermentation vessel, as you can see it's quite a small brew this one. I've added a brewer's belt um, to control the temperature of this uh, via a temperature controller that you can see there with the readout. Uh, at the moment the water is still cooling down a little bit and you can see a probe there with the putty that's actually plumber's putty and I use that basically because uh, it gives an extremely accurate temperature reading I'd really recommend it. About two hours later this was the scene looking good. So I hope you enjoyed the video uh, naturally there will be a fair amount of dry hopping going on to this one and I'm very intrigued to see how this is going to turn out. I do have a great deal of confidence in this recipe so do feel free to try it. Usually I'm generally only sharing stuff that I've brewed many many times before uh, but like I say I've got confidence in this one so give it a spin. So if you did like this video then please like it in YouTube this really helps me out. And if you haven't subscribed already and you wish to, um, then please do so. I do have an awful lot more content planned for the future. Thanks very much for watching and happy brewing.